I'm back, finally. Uh, made it back to the house last night. Actually got uh, decent sleep in my own bed, which is always a bonus. So the fires are still apparently like at zero percent containment, but I guess they're not spreading as fast. I got all the air cleaners running in here. It's actually manageable. Air quality here is 385 at the moment. Never would have thought that that is considered good. It actually peaked at 1003 down south of here a ways. They had to rebound their charts to even measure this stuff. Absolutely insane. But the evacuation zones have been reduced a fair amount and a lot of people are able to get back to their houses, at least the ones that are still there. Um, a couple of my friends had some properties where things got destroyed, um, but they had other places they could stay. So. Definitely interesting situations. Fires are still very much ablaze and there is zero rain in the forecast. And even if the fires do go out, there is the problem of things smoldering like crazy for months, potentially. So it's gonna make things a little bit interesting here for a while. I did leave a big air scrubber and an ozone generator and some other stuff running in the house while I was gone. So the smoke in here isn't really too bad. Like, I think just some doing some laundry is gonna get rid of the smoke smell from a lot of stuff. I've got a bunch of footage that I'm editing through right now of the last few days. I think it starts on Wednesday or something like that. But I'm gonna, I'm basically just cutting it all together and we're gonna do an overall video of the whole process. How things went, what I was doing, how things changed. And I have to be kind of careful about some of the stuff. You're gonna hear me talking about some fires that were started. And the way YouTube is and the way things are, any comments relating to specific groups or political parties, we'll say, are going to be deleted. So we're still getting information on a lot of this stuff, but there was a lot of fires that were accelerated, we'll say, by things that had nothing to do with lightning or whatever. You'll, you'll see later in the video. but. Again, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions and I'm not going to say, you know, certain people are responsible or not, but things are interesting in this state. That's all I can say. But anyways, here's a video of what I've been up to for the last week. It's definitely been an adventure. So I'm sitting here in the van and I'm going to turn this down. I have a really hard time when things are going on, like natural disasters or other stuff like that, just sitting around doing nothing. So, I came out and I'm in the van. A uh, few friends have evacuated their place and there's a few other around where their places are, well, they can see flames and burning, burning embers uh, falling near their house. So, I'm just kind of out here. I'm in a good spot where I can pick up radio communications from everyone and I'm keeping an eye on the fire maps and sending people updates as I get them. Um, this this is my afternoon. I'm uh, <laughs> hanging out in a parking lot trying to feel like I'm useful. <laughs> um, yeah, past work I did though, it's kind of like, well, if something happens, you run over there and take care of it. And it's a little bit difficult to uh, not do that anymore. You can't really switch that part of your brain off once it's activated, but yeah, look at that. Yeah, I've got some uh, helicopter support coming in right now. I guess there's a bunch of people that need to get out of a landlocked area, so I was just hearing that, that they're going to try and airlift a bunch of people out, but yeah, crazy times. Um, seven people I know now that have had to flee. It's kind of insane, but you know, I personally know what it's like to have a house burned down. I had that happen a long time ago. It wasn't weather related, but it kind of changes your perspective on things, and uh, Suddenly you realize stuff is just stuff and it can all be replaced, but yeah, hopefully, uh, well, I was going to say hopefully come morning, uh, things are better, but with this weather that's going on and I'm looking at the, uh, the wind maps and everything, I don't think this is going to go away overnight. Okay. So here's where we're at right now. Portland's up here. Um, there are some more fires up north in, uh, Vancouver or actually out Washington East a little bit. Yeah, I'm having troubles with the network connection here. Um, yeah, so we've got that. And then our air quality index is pretty insane. 
So if we look around down here in Staten, Oregon, we're at 500. I've never even seen it that high before, but that's where you may have seen some of the videos of the sky being completely red. Actually, hang on here, I've got that video. Hi all, so this right here is downtown Staten. You can see the red hue. So anyway, you get the idea there and I'm out running around right now. I've kind of been bouncing from place to place between some people's houses. Down here right where I'm at at the moment, um, we're at like 198. Downtown Portland is hovering between 88 and 92, somewhere in there. So right now, all of the wind is pretty much going from east to west. And if we pulled the satellite view, it's actually really interesting to see all the smoke. So let me zoom out here a little bit. So... This is Portland up here, we've got Vancouver, and then down here is Corvallis and Salem. But as you can see, all the smoke is coming up and just going west. And it's pretty much just all blowing out to sea at this point. Oh, I haven't scrolled down to California, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so all of this like pukey white colored stuff is smoke. This white here is actual clouds, but yeah, so that's a bit intense. Now this right here is the Clackamas County evacuation map. Um, a lot of the people I know live in this area here, and as you can see, eh, and the cellular networks are really taxed right now. Come on, you can do it. But there we go, as you can see, at least, you know, 60%, maybe 65% of Clackamas County is set for evacuation right now. Portland is right up here, and at the moment, um, I'm sitting, let's see here, where am I? I'm kind of down here right at the edge of this yellow zone here, but yeah, things are definitely interesting. Um, the wind is supposed to die down here this afternoon later on, hopefully, and tomorrow, but I have yet to see evidence of, whoop, but I have yet to see evidence of that. We're still averaging between 15 and 20 mile an hour winds right now. So let me pull this back up here. Yeah, so right now, this is what, like 13 miles an hour here, 14, 14. This is low over here, nine miles an hour. So it's not a super strong wind, but it's enough to definitely cause some problems. And as I've been sitting here, um, these towers that you used to be able to see over there are now no longer visible. Uh, I guess if I zoom in, you can see them. But uh, yeah, fun stuff. There's a lot of people showing up with travel trailers and motorhomes here at the mall. I think people that are being evacuated are kind of staging up here in this area. Um, right now that area looks pretty good. They're actually using Clackamas Community College as a shelter. Um, yeah, I think you're good for now, um, but yeah, I mean, you should see and hear a lot of activity if they wind up clearing that shelter out, um, but yeah, I think you're in a decent spot looking at the fire maps at the moment. Yeah, I'll let you know if I see anything change. Okay, bye. It's hard to convey how yellow out here it is right now. Well, maybe it is coming through on the camera. Um, yeah. It's 6.30 p.m. Yeah, this is crazy. Okay, things are getting interesting. Um, we had an AQI down about 30 miles south of Portland of 591 yesterday. I didn't even know that was possible. Yesterday though, the wind was sort of up high and it was pulling most of the smoke up and away. So even though you could look up in the sky and see smoke, it wasn't down at ground level. 
But today, that's a completely different story. Um, oh crap, they just updated the map again. Hang on. So where I'm at here um, is an area that I normally never would have thought would be... Um, By the way, there's also arson going on. Um, there's people lighting pallets on fire and bushes and dumping gasoline on stuff. Oh boy. Um, so, it looks like... Oh. So they just updated the evacuation zone. Well, actually here, I'll zoom out a little ways. So, as you can see, there's not much green left. This is actual fire and burning. This is evacuation zone. Yellow is you're about to be kicked out. And green is uh, it's probably time to drain the pool onto the lawn and make sure things aren't going to catch fire. I don't know if fire can make it all the way to where I'm at or not. When I released the last video, there was one four miles away, but it got put out. And now, well, somehow what I'm hearing on the police scanner is getting misconstrued into conspiracy theory so I don't know all I know is I can't see anything outside yeah you can barely see to the top of that tree so I'm gonna get the rest of my stuff kind of packed up I mean I've already I've already got stuff ready to go no matter what anyways but I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a little bit more sorting of things and I might try and head over to the store just to get a little bit more food but anyways things are definitely getting weird here and um, Anyways, I'm going to check in with some friends and see how they're doing. There's a bunch of people I know now that have had to move or leave their houses. Um, but I'm also keeping an eye on the weather maps and the wind and also where the actual fires are and listening to what's going on on the scanner and relaying any relevant information to people that I know need it. So, yeah, I'll be back later. Well, I think we're getting down to the wire here. Um, I just got an emergency alert on all of my phones. And I've got pretty much most of my stuff packed up. About half of it's in the van, just in case. But I'm gonna hang out here and keep an eye on things uh, just until we actually get into the evacuation zone. Uh, where I'm at right here, we're in the level two zone. And level three is a little less than a mile away. But I've been looking at the weather maps and the wind is just changing direction about every 45 minutes and even at different altitudes it's like moving different directions and stuff which is terrible for fires being spread with embers and whatnot and up at about 2,000 feet there's some pretty strong winds pulling across too so when the burning debris gets up there it gets carried for miles but anyways I've got a place to go and uh, I've got pretty much everything I need packed up here and all the essentials and whatnot notice the neighbors are packing up everything as well right now too so yeah this could get interesting um, fun stuff. Where are you now? We're on a bank heading towards 213. We saw them coming out of ODF parking lot. You literally are reading my mind. I was about to ask when you guys to take that. Yes, please. And can you even self-assign to it when you're looking at the call? So, I may seem a little bit, um, oh. Not cold towards this, but I've dealt with a lot of interesting things in the past. And, um, well, worst case scenario, if this area does get engulfed in flames, this is not the first time I would potentially have had a house burned down. So right now, uh, just in preparation, I'm going to go outside. We're going to capture some utilities, mostly, well, I guess just turn off the gas. The nice thing about this house, though, is that it was replumbed a few years ago, and it has PEX piping for all the water. Now, people underestimate steam expansion. It is massive. I, I forget what the percentage is, but having plastic PEX lines in the walls and in the attic all over this place is actually really good. Because if something does start burning, those water lines are going to rupture, and you're going to get massive amounts of steam. I mean, like, one cup of steam could fill... Uh, one cup of water, when it expands, could fill a garage, uh, probably two or three of these garages in space. So, that is a good thing. But, since the furnace and the fireplace are the only thing that use gas here, and 
just in preparation, he's seeing how it's summertime, I'm gonna go shut off the gas outside. And I've got some irrigation stuff set up outside, so if it does come to it, uh, I can throw a soaker hose over the roof and kind of help with some of the embers. The roof on this house is also brand new and has screens over all the vents. So another good thing, we've got hardy plank siding on it as well, which is cementuous or concrete based. So I think we should be in pretty good shape. I mean, uh, granted there are a lot of trees and stuff around here, but uh, I'm not backed up against any forests necessarily. So while fire is in fact hot, there's not gonna be enough surrounding fuel, I don't think, to make it hot enough to be able to bypass any steam or other things like that. But anyways, uh, let's go outside and take care of this. And I will tell you, after you have been through one house fire, um, it really puts things into perspective and all of your belongings or possessions just kind of become stuff that's replaceable. So um, I guess if nothing else, that helps a little bit. Um, like I said, I'm, I don't think I'm going overboard necessarily being prepared here, but when the moment comes, if it does, which there's a very high probability of that happening, I wanna be able to just grab the little bit of my stuff that's left, hop in the van and get out of here. So, yeah, good times. Uh, keeping an eye on the evacuation maps right now. Gotten a few more emergency alerts that are getting closer and closer to my area. So, yeah, at least I do have a place to go. And um, there's actually a number of friends that are kind of congregating there. Um, I'm gonna keep uh, going through stuff here, keep an eye on the maps, finish packing up, and uh, hopefully all of this is for no reason. And uh, I'll just continue on. Ooh, zoomed in. All right, so I'm all loaded up, ready to go. I figure I'm, uh, let me turn this down. Some of the communications agencies over here are having problems that are being caused by outside influences. And with all the other weirdness going on, I figure being here by myself is an increasingly bad idea. So I'm headed over to a friend's place and uh, a bunch of other friends that were evacuated from areas south of here are at his place. They've got their motorhomes and travel trailers and stuff. So I figured it'd probably be good to be around a group of people. Only thing right now is traffic is probably gonna be an issue. Actually, you know what? It looks like all the evacuation traffic is going a different direction. All right, cool. Well, uh, yeah, got all my stuff in the back, grabbed one of the big air cleaners so I can set it up at his place. Got my ventilator, all the good stuff. So yeah, adventure time. Oh, and by the way, um, I haven't gotten to see a lot of these people in quite some time or hang out. So while the reason we are there is kind of eh, tragic ish, it'll be cool to hang out with a bunch of friends that we none of us have had time to do anything with each other in a while or something. Now, I didn't really film a whole lot when I got out to my friend's place. A few clips here and there, but one thing, I forgot to bring my wheelchair charger with me, so that presented an interesting challenge. And then also, about an hour after I left, another fire magically popped up very close to here, about half a mile as the crow flies. It took nine fire trucks, almost two hours to take care of it. Um, there were several structures lost. so. When I said things were getting weird and it seemed like a bad idea, like I kind of have this sense as it were of everything around me and uh, it got to the point where, well, like I said, being here by myself seemed like a bad idea and I'm glad I left. <laughs> so the one thing I forgot to bring was a charger for my chair. So we've taken the batteries out of it and we're charging them up outside. All right, so I forgot to bring my 
I forgot to bring my wheelchair charger. So we took the batteries out of the chair, charged it up for a while and stuck them back in. Interesting note though, uh, so it turns out Quantum does have power sensing and when you charge the chair, it's monitoring the current going in and out. And that's what makes the battery gauge work. When I took it out of there and we charged it, it said 34%. I don't know if you can see that now, but it still says 34%. That's because the batteries were charged outside of the chair. So next time I plug a thing in and charge it, it'll recalibrate itself. Or it should. All right, we're gonna check and see if the chickens have put themselves away or not. It's after sunset and I think usually they reinstall themselves in here. So let's see here. Um, I think you're supposed to count how many there are. Um, one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, they're all there. That'll do. Yeah. Oh, I was like, why isn't this closing? Hmm, that seemed kind of janky. Eh, whatever. Wow, so visibility's not very good. Um, this is a bridge. I'm headed back over to my place now. It's, uh, it's in the green zone at this point. The air quality is about 80 points worse at my place versus where I was, but where I just came from was still like 390 something. So I'm gonna at least go back and take a shower and grab my wheelchair charger and then evaluate to see if the air quality is gonna be an issue or not, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay, so first impressions. I took my big air cleaner with me, um, but there's four smaller ones running in here. And um, I'm not smelling any smoke, but my nose is also not the best judge of working just in general very well. Um, so I'm gonna do some laundry, take a shower real quick, and then kind of evaluate. I guess I could turn on the light. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, hmm. <laughs> so, um, air quality here is too bad. I, uh, yeah, I just hit my nebulizer again so I can even breathe, but um, I'm headed back to my friend's place. Apparently, there's a real danger of the two largest fires merging, and uh, we've already got 4.7 million acres burned. Um, if those two large fires merge, it's basically unstoppable. <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, there's talk of potentially some rain, but then also potentially some thunderstorms. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get away from this because where I'm at right now, I'm, well, let's just say I'm closer to the fire than I would, the fires than I would prefer to be. And the air quality and the smoke is just completely, is completely different over here. So once again, I think it's a better idea to be around people. Um, so we're gonna do that. I grabbed some more stuff that I needed and uh, yeah, fun times. <laughs> I forgot to mention too that my place was constantly going in and out of the yellow and red zone. It seems like every time they updated the evacuation map, I was in the red zone, then I was in the yellow zone, and it just kept going back and forth. So obviously being a wheelchair user, it takes a little bit more time. Like you can't just get up, grab your stuff and leave. Like you have to bring some equipment with you. And that's the trick is like, you know, people say, oh, no possessions are worth, you know, losing your life in a fire over. It's like, well, that may be true with everything else that's going on. Some of the equipment I have to carry with me, if I don't have that, while it may not result in instantly being burned, it will still result in very bad things happening. So with this place dancing in and out of the zones, I was like, I'm not even going to deal with it. I'm awake. I'm good to go right now. I'm just going to grab my stuff and be gone. And then when I came back, 
you know, the air quality being over 400. Um, and I, my nose doesn't work very well. It's part of the TBI or brain injury. Like it's intermittent, so I can't smell smoke necessarily. And I mean, obviously there's fire alarms for that, but still it just, it seemed like it was a much better idea to just not be here and be around a bunch of people. made it back. Um, I think we're good this time. It's kind of crazy when I see on the map that the air quality index is 365 and I'm like, oh, that's not too bad. Still multiple times past the healthy limit and into the zone where normal people may have issues. But anyways, I'm going to get the rest of my filth unpacked here and I got a bunch of video footage I need to go through and stuff. So I've got six air cleaners in here now and seems to be holding good. It turns out the furnace doesn't have a filter here. Um, so it's in a spot where I can't get to it. My friend suggested when I was leaving that I just find the cold air return right here. And uh, I can actually reach that with the seat lift on the bounder. So I'm gonna try and find just a generic furnace filter and stick that to the ceiling. Um, that way I'll at least have, you know, I'll be able to use the furnace without worrying about, well, mostly the AC. Uh, so I'll be able to use the AC without the evaporator getting all clogged up and stuff. But anyways, I'm gonna finish getting stuff set up, make some food, and then um, I'm not like completely unpacking. I mean, while I am out of all of the level, like green, yellow, red zones, I'm not in, I'm at a level zero right here now. But things still can change. They forecasted rain. I looked at the, for <laughs> I looked at the weather forecast it was two one hundredths of an inch is what they're forecasting. So in Portland, I think that's just a normal Tuesday, like with maybe fog. But anyways, I'm going to stop you up and get some food. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'm sure I got stuff to talk about. So that's where we're at right now. Visibility is less than a quarter mile outside. You can't see any of the surrounding hills and you know, within maybe a hundred yards, things start getting really hazy. Still no rain in the forecast at all. And, you know, they're, they've been slowly reducing the evacuation area so people can get back to their houses if they feel it's safe. But the, everything is still very dynamic and changing very quickly here. So I think where I'm at, we're good. But then again, you never know. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, been an interesting few days. This isn't going to be over anytime soon, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated as I find out new information. But yeah, good times. Mm -hmm.